it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited as always to be with you. I know it's going to get old after a while, but you know what? I can't help but be excited. I've told everybody that will listen to me that every moment that I get in front of a microphone, I just love it. Not to ham it up, but there's just something about podcasting that really is in my DNA at this point. And um, thousand plus episodes certainly will cause that to happen. But I am excited today because if nothing else, this topic that we are about to discuss is a very important topic. It's not one that we we bring up uh, quite a bit on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast, but I've told you before in the past, and I've gotten feedback from listeners that you know they want to hear all the great stuff that's happening here in Northwest Arkansas, including food, fun, all kinds of good things to do, the Razorbacks, but they also want to know about some of the other programs that take part, take place in our area that help people just live day to day. And this organization that has joined me today, Peace at Home Family Shelter, is no exception to that. And so I'm excited that I had a chance to connect with Bethany Clark, who is one of the newer employees at Peace at Home. And she is the marketing and communications coordinator there. And uh, she has offered to come on the podcast and just talk with us a little bit about Peace at Home and their 45-year history here in Washington County and the difference that they've made in the lives of so many that are struggling with having a safe place to be. And and uh, and certainly, it's appropriate that this particular episode is happening in the month of October because it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So without further ado, I want to welcome Bethany Clark to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. How are you doing, Bethany? I'm doing great. I'm very excited to be here. Good, good. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. Well, as you, as everybody listening to this knows, we'd love for you just to give us your cliff note version of your superhero origin story. You can take us back to the cradle or you can start in high school <laughs> or wherever. But, you know, what brought you here to Northwest Arkansas? Well, I was basically born and raised in small town East Texas. So that was where the majority of my life has been. Um, while I was there, my parents raised me very religious. So I was a part of, you know, a lot of youth groups and Christian organizations and churches. And while I was going through all of that at the beginning of my high school experience, I was sexually abused by someone who was a family friend. And that kind of led me on to this whole trail of wanting to be very proactive, very hands-on helping people. And so that led me to going to college. I ended up getting a degree in business, which doesn't sound exactly like it coordinates with helping people, but it does. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so I was, I have a degree in business and I was helping my parents with their small business for a while, but I have been wanting to work with a nonprofit, like I said, since I was in high school. And so, yeah, whenever I, I heard of Peace at Home and their their philosophy of empowering survivors and uh, just everything that they do, I was very excited to join them and kind of help help them however I can. And so that's where the business comes in. I get to do all the fun marketing behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> right, right. Well, and and I think I mean, obviously, your background gives you a unique perspective on things, right? Because mm-hmm. I know I know a lot of people come into this space and maybe they, that's not their story. And, and while, you know, you have a fairly traditional background, you know, these issues and these things that come up with survivors of sexual abuse and what have you, it happens across the spectrum. Absolutely. And I think it's important for people to know that, right? And a lot of times people feel like, oh, it's just me or it was my fault. And the reality is, is that any one of us can be susceptible to this in one way, shape or form or another. And so I think it's really important for your story to be heard early and often. And I'm glad that you found a home at 
peace at home, no pun intended. <laughs> and uh, and that you're, you know, you're taking your skill set and abilities and adding it to what they have already been doing for 45 years. So what was your initial feeling once you got here and, you know, boots on the ground and really got involved with what Peace at Home has, has, was, has been doing? Honestly, just overwhelming awe. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing about how they were the first domestic violence shelter to open in Arkansas back in 1977, and then how much they've grown, like you said, over the past 45 years that they've been here, um, and how all of the services that they provide. It's really, truly all-encompassing and really amazing of, of all the things that they're able to offer and how much they're able to do it so well. Yeah. So. Yeah. And how much support does Peace at Home get from the local community? Quite a bit. My boss, the Eva Terry, the domestic or the um, development coordinator, excuse me, she uh, is a part of a lot of boards on the community, trying to get our name out there more. We have a uh, a board group at Peace at Home, and they are made up of people from all over the the community. There's mm. you know lawyers. There's just general. Family people, there's, it kind of is all over the spectrum. <laughs> all walks of life, all experiences. Exactly. Lending themselves to what Peace at Home is doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we encourage people from the community to volunteer in any way that they're able to. So we really get out there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so tell me, let's kind of walk through some of the services that you offer, because I would mm-hmm. love for people to be aware of, of ways that not only, you know, as you're listening to this, folks, I want you to hear what Bethany is sharing some of the services that Peace at Home offers and maybe some ways that maybe you can help them out beyond just monetary, right? Because people think mm-hmm. mo- money is the only you know solution. It's a good one. Absolutely. But, 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 yeah, they'll take your money, I'm sure. But <laughs> they, you know, they would also take your talent. They may also take your time depending on the situation. So let's hear from Bethany as far as that's concerned. What Give us just kind of a a spectrum of understanding of the different services that Peace at Home offers. Sure. So one of the main things that people think of is our emergency shelter. We have 50 beds that could be, you know, a parent and their children or an individual, whatever, whoever is needed, needs a bed, they basically have one. And so that is is the main thing that people think of when they think of peace at home and family shelter is the shelter itself. Mm -hmm. But then we also have housing and outreach advocates. So we have people who are able to kind of walk through the survivors in finding housing, finding the finances to afford the housing. There are two different programs in that the housing advocate spectrum, I guess. We have the Safe Housing Enterprise, which is more of a a long-term program where the advocates offer financial assistance and support for up to two years for the survivors. And then there is also the Home Restored program, which provides more short-term, immediate financial assistance and advocacy to help families obtain and maintain safe housing, which is one very important thing. You know, if someone is escaping an abusive relationship and they don't have support or someone to stay with, they kind of need that immediate housing to really (laughs) move forward. And then another thing that we have is legal assistance. So we do have an attorney at Peace at Home. And then several legal advocates uh, that are able to provide free legal representation and walk them through the legal process, help them with divorces, custody, visitation, child support, and orders of protection cases. And the, the legal advocates are also able to accompany the survivors to court and offer, you know, whatever information they need. And then also just general emotional support, because that can be a very emotional experience, I'm sure. Yeah. And then we have counseling. Peace at Home has counselors available for all of the survivors if they need it and their children if they need it to kind of process the emotional, mental toll that it took on the survivors. And through that, we have uh, both English and Spanish options for people who speak Spanish. They aren't left out. (laughs) Okay. And then our final thing is we have a 24-hour crisis hotline where people can reach out through our website and say, hey, I need help or I know someone who needs help. And we can walk you through the process of getting whatever help is needed. Yeah. You know, as I was looking at your website and I, w- I noticed that there was a couple of things that really stood out to me and I, and I didn't think about this, but 
like you have a pop up that comes up that reminds people to clear your browser history. Yes. Because if you are in a home where you are being battered and or abused in some way, shape or form, and that other person has access to your computer, there's a way for them to determine, you know, what you're doing. They could check your Google browsing history, but they can also just see, you know, through your cache on your whatever you're using, whether it's Safari or Chrome and mm-hmm. all that. So it's it's important to clear that out. And, yes. and I like the fact that you, you put a reminder there. I mean, you guys have done so much with what you have available to you that just in 2021 alone, and, and some of this information is, is purely from your website, but you've provided safe shelter to 75 adults and 76 children escaping violence, totaling 6,238 nights of safe shelter. Yeah. That is a lot of time for people. It is. I mean, I don't it's think people realize very that. Significant. Yeah. And that made the difference in the lives of those 151 people. Yeah. Children and adults. Yeah. You provided housing assistance to 160 families in the community locally here, uh, legal services to 537 families, including divorce, child custody representation, and assistance with obtaining orders of protection, which are very important, counseling services to 92 survivors of domestic violence, a listening ear, which is also important, and assistance to 1,205 crisis calls received through your hotline, and then $12,500 total amount of thrift store vouchers given to clients. Yes. And I'm glad that you guys include that on there. You guys have a thrift store where people are able to donate, kind of like the same way they would donate to Goodwill. They can donate to Peace at Home, Mm -hmm. and all the proceeds that that are gained from those donations then support Peace at Home. And that's not the only support that you get, but that is one way that people can support peace at home. Is that correct? Yes, it is very significant. And the thrift store is also available for our clients. We give them vouchers and they are basically able to shop the thrift store and get whatever they need, clothing, furniture, books, anything for free. And so that's another very significant program service that we offer because one thing about abuse is you're anything, your individuality is taken away from you. So you don't have any sense of self. And by giving them this opportunity to like shop for their own clothes, that little, that little thing can really help them gain some autonomy. Autonomy. Thank you. (laughs) I know that's a 25 cent word. So no, you're right. And and I'm, I'm glad you actually mentioned that because sometimes people leave their homes in the dead of night with just the clothes on their back and the clothes on their children's back. So part of restoring dignity to individuals, in addition to just helping them through their process from a mental perspective, from a physical perspective, and and putting them in a safe place, you also want to restore their dignity in a way. And and one way to do that is through clothing and other items that you kind of give to them so that they can kind of start to rebuild. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the operative word here is that when you come to peace at home, you are in the process of trying to rebuild and and get out of a very toxic situation and get into a situation where you are a are able to grow and do it in a way where you're not under somebody's thumbnail or or somebody's control. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And that I think is another way that peace at home stands apart just in the shelter program alone. Because we don't require people to sign in and out. We don't ask that they relinquish their cell phones. We don't, you know, we, we're not monitoring you. You're given any free will. You can leave at any time, come back at any hour. So it's not, we're not trying to control them. We're okay. letting them control their own lives. Yeah. Now, speaking of which, though, that brings up a good point, though. Do you advise them? Because I know with like like with my cell phones, I can track my kids all the time. Mm-hmm. So do you advise them on what to maybe get rid of on their phones so that they're they're not easily tracked, right? Because yes. one of the things you said to me right at the beginning was, you know, we have a shelter, but obviously we that's private. We don't tell people where that shelter is because exactly. you don't want anyone to know this. But how do you ensure that people are safe from that aspect of it? We do have programs that we're able to download and go through their cell phones and take out anything that the abuser could use to track them. Okay. So we do have like a software program that it's able to go through all of that. All of that. And we talk with like our advocates talked with our clients and walk them through that whole process. So we're not trying to control them. We're trying to keep them safe with that aspect. But but yeah, other than that, there's really not a lot that we 
ask of them. We kind of offer them as much as we can, and then they they pick and choose what they decide to to take. Yeah, no, I I, lo- I love that. Now, do you guys only serve Washington County, or do you also serve Benton County? We also serve Benton County. Yes. Okay. All right. Because yeah, we've had CAC on here, uh, Children's Advocates, and they were on, and I'm kind of glad that. You know, I had them on a couple of months ago and I'm and now that we're having you on, no one will ever say that we didn't have enough information about yeah. <laughs> this pro these programs that Absolutely. are available to folks. Cause, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people know people that are in abusive relationships. Yes. And a lot of times we just don't know where to turn, right? We don't know who to go to. It's like, oh, well, here, I want to give you some money. That's fine. But why don't you, you know, giving people a solution to their problems is even better. Absolutely. And money doesn't always provide that solution. But with what you guys are doing at Peace at Home really can make a difference in the lives of individuals. And I'm sure you guys have had success stories of people that have been through the program and have come out the other side, if you will. Is there any one or two that you can share that really stand out for you? Certainly, we're not asking for names or anything like that, but just stories that you seem to repeat over and over again, which is part of the bigger why Peace at Home does what they do. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, one thing that whenever I first came to Peace at Home and I was going through, you know, the domestic violence training and everything. One thing that really stood out to me is that typically it takes up to seven times for a survivor to like fully, thoroughly escape their abuser so they can leave and then go back and leave and go back and they can go back for a number of different reasons. But no support is one of them. And just the act of of leaving an abuser in itself is one of the most dangerous times for a survivor. But another thing that I get to do uh, as a marketing coordinator is I send out weekly supporter newsletters. So if you sign up for a newsletter, you will get one from us every week with updates of what we did that week to help survivors. And last week, there was a lot of legal assistance, which was really amazing to me. We sent out seven clients filed for divorce. One client was they finalized their divorce and were given full custody of their children and child support, which is huge. Yeah. And then we had one person who we were helping with their immigration status. They were able to get a work like visa, a work it wasn't permit. A, it was a permit. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. While they were waiting for their visa, which is another really huge aspect of being able to leave is being able to actually work and earn your own money. So that was very significant as well. So how are you guys reaching the Latinx community, since that is the fastest growing community here in Northwest Arkansas, mm-hmm. I want to say they're, they are like, I forget what percentage they are of the population, but the Northwest Arkansas Council just did a diversity report and all that information came out. And I mean, that area is growing. We just got a brand new bank, Bank OC, which is the first bilingual bank in the state of Arkansas. And so, I mean, what you guys are doing are, are important. Do you have multiple people on staff that are bilingual or yes. you do? Okay. Yes, All we right. have several people on our staff. <clears throat> we have several advocates, counselors who are bilingual. We try to offer as much information in Spanish as possible. Sure. We have a support group that is in Spanish. And so we're trying to make it as inclusive as possible sure. Sure. Um, so yeah. that anyone who needs help is able to find us. Yeah. Are there any identifiable groups that have come for help from you guys that wouldn't be normally associated with Peace at Home at all? I mean, one thing that we're really working on is being accessible to the LGBT plus community. Okay. A lot of people who think of domestic violence shelters, they think it's just for women. Right. And that's not true for us. We are, like I keep saying, we are for everybody, Uh, whoever needs help please reach out. Um, Sure. So we are here for men, women, transgender, non-binary people, people who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, whatever it is, we are here for you. And so we have a section of our website that talks a lot about abuse in LGBT plus relationships and what that would look like, how it looks different than in heterosexual relationships. Sure. In ways that Peace and Home can help you. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's, a, I mean, I think it's important and that's kind of what I was, what I was leading to. So I, I appreciate you, you sharing that. What are, I guess, what would be in your mind, the easiest way for someone listening to this to get involved with Peace at Home? 
whether it's to volunteer their time, whether it's to donate to the Peace at Home thrift store, what would you say is the easiest barrier, a lowest barrier to entry to help out? Both the things that you just said. Okay. <laughs> so like I said, join our newsletter, get weekly updates about what we're doing, follow us on social media and engage with the content that you see, share our posts. We want as many people as we can to hear about us. So those are both really great ways that people can help and volunteering your time, your resources. Like I said, we do have a crisis chat line and that is primarily run by volunteers. So you can volunteer to be the person on the other end of that line, helping people get the resources that they need. And um, you do the training with them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We train right. them. They thoroughly. don't just leave people to their own devices. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. They, they cool. are, they're completely trained on how to Respond. handle every situation. Yes. Sure. Sure. And then also <clears throat> donate to the thrift store. We could always use more donations. And you guys have a pet sanctuary campaign. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Uh, so that is coming well, you know, soon. The reason why I bring that up is because <laughs> Folks in Northwest Arkansas love their pets. Absolutely. I mean, we've, we've actually done a podcast episode on dogs and just the dog environment. Like, where can you go and have a beer with your dog? Right? I, I mean, love it's that. Just, so it's, it's, it is, we, we recognize and acknowledge that pets are very important to the lives of those that live in Northwest Arkansas. So mm-hmm. it, it wouldn't surprise me that you would have something like that, but how did this whole, whole thing come about and what is the focus of the Pet Sanctuary campaign? So that is a need that we saw wasn't being fulfilled. We don't have space at our shelter for people to bring their dogs, mm-hmm. cats, pets with them. And so by creating this Pet Sanctuary, people are able to bring their pets with them, take them the pets out of the abusive situation because that is one way that people will abuse is through the pets. Yeah. And so by bringing the pets along, they are protecting each other really in that situation. So yes, that is in the works. It, we are keep campaigning for it. We're still getting as much money as we can for it. We are working on building it now. So Okay. Very cool. Very yes. cool. So what's coming down the pipeline besides that pet sanctuary? What is coming down the pipeline for Peace at Home in, in the near future, in the next year or two? That is a fantastic question. (laughs) As far as I know, it is just continue the growth, keep building as much capacity that we can. Yeah. So we're trying to reach people that normally wouldn't hear about us. Right. Um, And we do things seasonally. So coming for Christmas, we do a gift card run. You know, people can donate gift cards so that we can give those to survivors at our shelter. Yep. So yeah, we we're really just trying to make sure that anyone who needs assistance knows about us and yeah. is able to find us easily and all of the resources that we have for them. Yeah. Well, and everybody can certainly find out more about Peace at Home Shelter through their website, which is peaceathomeshelter.org. All one word. That's peace at home shelter.org. You can find out about the organization, about the programs and services that they offer how you can get involved. Certainly, you, I would encourage you to subscribe to the newsletter that Bethany mentioned. And they're on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So there is no excuse after listening to this <laughs> in terms of how you can plug in to what Bethany and the rest of her team are doing there at Peace at Home Shelters. And then we will make sure that all of that is on the show notes so that way you guys know how to connect with these guys and see what they're doing. Bethany, I I really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to connect with us. And when you told me the other other day when we spoke that, and you reminded me that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, it just spoke to me that, you know, sometimes we're so busy in our lives that we forget about those that are going through challenges that we may never, like I've never dealt with that. And Mm -hmm. I, I just don't have a frame of reference for it, but I do know some people that have struggled with domestic violence, abuse, sexual abuse. And so it's, it's, I think it's incumbent upon all of us, myself included, to be that village that we, we so desperately seek in terms of the fact that we all need to be looking out for each other. Yes. And I think you guys are doing a really great job of that. And so I just wish you guys nothing but continued success as you grow Peace at Home Shelter, as more people become aware of your mission and what you are looking to do in the future and how you want to. It's unfortunate that you have to grow, but you do. because. Mm-hmm. The need is great. 
Yes. Right? In yes. this community, the need is great. And there are actually people suffering in silence right this minute. And so I'm hoping that whether that's you listening to this or whether you know someone that is that individual suffering in silence, that you would share this episode with them, that you would help them to take that next step to figure things out. And I thought it was interesting that you said that it takes people up to seven times before they make that commitment. Mm -hmm. And you know, there is, and you probably know this because you are a business major, you went to school and you studied business. In advertising, you have to mention something seven times for it to take hold. Yes. And so I think some of that is a psychology effect of just doing something over and over again before you're like, you know what? I got it. Yes. This is what I need to do. I'm in a situation. I have reached out to these guys a number of times. They're here to help me. I'm going to step out in faith. And and I, I believe that these people can actually really help me. And sometimes you need that reinforced message over and over and over again. And so that's why I'm sure for you as a marketing communications person, you have to stay on message at all times. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So that's awesome. Well, Bethany Clark, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast today and, and kind of sharing the story of peaceathomeshelter.org. I want to encourage everybody to check these guys out. Remember, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And even if you're listening to this episode months later, it's not too late to support what these guys are doing, to reach out to Bethany, her information, as well as the information of all the team members, even the board members. I see Blake Pennington is on the board. Shout out to Blake, who's a member of my Rotary Club. And so (laughs) there's some really amazing people that are part of this initiative. And I know that there's some corporate sponsors for Peace at Home Shelter. So you know, there are many ways that you can get involved with this organization and meet the needs of those that are going through the darkest times in their lives, both here in Washington County, as well as Benton County here in Northwest Arkansas. So Bethany, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Listen, I I get it that this is a much heavier topic than usual. And uh, we will get back to regular programming. But I've told you this many a times that it's important for us to have these conversations early and often with our audience. And there's always a, a chance for us to share new information, to let you know what's happening. And so I really want to thank you for indulging me with this particular episode of the podcast. And and I was very serious about what I said. Don't share it to share it for my podcast sake. Share it to share it with someone that definitely needs the help, that needs to know that they have options out there when it comes to being a victim of domestic violence and how they can overcome that. I mean, it's 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 really not as difficult as you think, but there are organizations like Peace at Home that are really out there making a difference. So let's support them in any way that we can. And, and certainly if you do reach out to them, let them know that you heard about it first here on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. And we're going to figure out a way that we can give back to what a Peace at Home is doing right here in our own community. So thank you so much. Remember, you can listen to this podcast and sign up for free for our free newsletter to keep up with us and all things NWA. Sign up today. You can subscribe to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast wherever you listen to it. And please consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. And of course, you know this already, but if you don't, our podcast comes out every Monday, rain or shine. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we'll see you back here next week for a new episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.